Have you ever wondered what it takes to stand out in the competitive field of software engineering? Well, in this video, we're gonna go over 18 Python projects that you can build into your portfolio to put you ahead of the competition and into your dream job. The first one being a number guessing game. So if we go ahead and just say Python 3, and we say the first one, number guessing game, we're gonna get a, I'm thinking of a number between one and 100, take a guess. So I'm going to say 50, too low, let's say 80, too high, 70, 65, whoa, there it is. And we got it in six attempts, and do you wanna play again, yes or no? This project is a great first project as it allows you to be able to learn all about coding and being able to use random integers. So it's a great first exercise of programming. Now the second project is a file manager where we can do a to-do list and do a couple other things with it. So if we go ahead and just run this project, we can see to-do list manager. If we wanna say one, we can add a new task like feed the dog. And we can say two, where we can now view all of our tasks. And we can go ahead and say, hey, I wanna mark a task complete and I want it to be number one. So now if we go and view the tasks, there's no tasks found. So it allows us to just be able to kind of create dictionaries and lists and be able to keep all of these items together so we can move up to the next step of programming. The next project definitely has to be one of the most fan favorites and you see these tutorials everywhere is a password generator. So if we go ahead and just do our password generator, here we can say how long we want the password to be. We can say we want it to be seven. If we type that in, we will get a password. So it's a password generator, it creates a password for you. So pretty cool stuff. If we say yes, we can do another one and type in, we want this password to be 10 characters. And now we're gonna get a 10 character password back. And this is a really cool project because it allows you to be able to create something useful, something that you actually have to pay money for if you wanna use their services. And this project is pretty easy to build and it allows you to learn so much about strings in the random library within Python. Now, the next project is rock, paper, scissors. This is where we're gonna get into some if and else statements and really learning how we can and capture in all the fundamentals of Python. So if we go ahead and just run this project, we can say, let's play rock, paper, scissors, enter your choice. I'm going to say rock. And it's gonna say the computer chose scissors, you won. So we can play again. And this time I will say paper and the computer chose scissors, so we lost. So that is a great game to build. So the fifth project of this video is gonna be tic-tac-toe. So tic-tac-toe is gonna to be really good because we're gonna be using double lists and double-ended arrays where we are going to be able to select where we want to play and then the computer will play right back. So it's a very good project to get onto your resume so you can really be showing how you are learning and able to capture different areas of Python that maybe the average interviewer wouldn't know how to do. So if we ran this, we can say, choose your symbol. I will say I'm X. Here we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we can pick between 0 and 8. If we say 4, that's gonna be the middle slot, we can get our X, and then the computer will play right after us. Here, I'm gonna say I want the 2 next, and the computer is going to lose here. So make sure 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm gonna win with a 6, but hey, it's a way of playing tic-tac-toe, and it's a great game to add to your resume. Now the next game is Hangman. So if we go ahead and check out Hangman, we can now guess a letter. So what letter do we wanna say? I'm gonna say A, ooh, there's a lot of A's, E. Oh, it's gonna be banana. I didn't even see that we have the words right here, but we could hide the words, but that is a way for us to be able to build a Hangman. It's gonna make us guess letters to see which word it chose at random out of our list of words up here. I highly recommend adding this to your project. And we're almost out of the terminal projects and we're going to start getting into pie games and how we can make bigger project and more graphical user interfaces. So the next project is going to be a calendar reminder project. So let's go ahead and just see what this looks like. If we do this, we can create a minder, view reminder, check today's reminder. Let's say we want to create a reminder for today or let's say for the future. So 2025 09-23. What is it? We'll just make up a wedding for someone. And we can view the reminders right here that we have a wedding for someone coming up. If we check today's reminders, we don't have any. 
and that's just a good project to again kind of be able to store information now what's good about this one is we're going to be using dates and strings so we're going to be using year month and day and being able to handle dates and everything is super critical in python so i highly recommend diving into calendar reminder because it allows you to learn how to handle dates and days and months which is critical now we have a dice roll simulator now this is going to be a pretty simple game or a pretty simple application where we can just press enter and it's just going to tell us what number we rolled. So it's a very simple random project, but rolling dice is critical in video games and critical in board games and a ton of different games, gambling and everything. So I wanted to make sure we added this to our project just because being able to do a dice rolling simulator is critical in a lot of situations that you might be in as a human or a Python developer. All right, so the next game is gonna be a quiz game. Yes, a quiz game, everyone's favorite thing to do, tests and quizzes, right? So let's go ahead and just go inside here and say we want to do a quiz game. So what is the capital of Paris or oh, of France? The answer is Paris. Um, who painted the Mona Lisa? Let's say, I don't know, or just planet and solar system, I don't know. I don't know. And we got a one out of four, so we failed that quiz. But this is a quiz game, which will allow us just to be able to create different classes and objects now. So this is a first step. You can get into creating classes because you're going to want a quiz. You're going to want the answer and all this different stuff. Um, you can create it however you want, but it's a really good game or a really good thing to be able to build and implement because it has to make you start thinking object oriented and how we can start making projects a little cleaner. Now, a timer is pretty cool because we have to start dealing with the sleep functionality and we are sleeping for one second based on the number of time someone puts in so if we check this project out we can say um, add in some time if we type in five it's going to count down from five so five four three two one zero and now the timers finished and we can do another timer if we want all right so if the password generator wasn't possible i know you've heard of a calculator project so if we go ahead and just say python 3 and we want to run the calculator we can see the different kind of operations that are given to us so we can type in the first number what is the operator let's say times and we'll say by four which will return 40. so we can do addition subtraction multiplication and division if we say we want to use it again we can say we have 100 and we want to subtract to 89 which will give us 11. So super simple calculator application, which is another easy thing that you can add to your Python resume real quick to really display those Python skills that you may have. All right, so now we're getting into bigger and bigger projects, the snake game, which will get you introduced to Pygame. So if we go ahead and run this project, this is where it gets a little bigger, our first graphical user interface where we can collect these things, where the snake can eat, and the snake just keeps getting bigger and bigger. This is something that is um, a good thing to add to your project. Um, one thing being Pygames is an extremely popular library and framework for building games in Python, but it also makes you learn a bunch of different things about Python and how things can work together. So right now I am the white thing trying to collect, but if we go into a wall, it is game over. So that's something huge we want to learn as a Python dev that you can add to your resume. Because quite frankly, if you can build something like Snake or some of these other games and projects that we have coming up, you are definitely in the hireable area of Python developer. Um, not all Python developers you know, can start doing all of this crazy artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, all this kind of stuff. Really to start off, if you can do you know half of these projects by yourself and add them to your resume this is a great way to get your foot into the door of any kind of company so you can become a developer yourself this project is one of the more fun ones in my opinion and it's space invaders so space invaders is a game where you're going to be this green blob but you can be a um, ship and we have to shoot enemies right here we can start shooting at the enemy ships as you can see I'm the green arrow going back and forth and I can just kind of start shooting at the red blocks which are the invaders trying to attack the ship so that's another great project to go into if you're trying to get into pi games and python projects all right so another project is flappy bird now this is a hard game this is a project that will definitely get you in the door if you can build this yourself now essentially what you have to do with this game is you are going to be a block um because i don't have any assets of images and pipes and stuff but we're going to be a block and we have to try and get inside the middle of tubes and if you crash you lose so i know it starts off pretty quick so um there's one i just got a score of one score of two 
score of three. This is literally the best I've ever done, and it's because you all are watching. Wow, six, and I am just crushing it. I, there we go, <laughs> now I lost. <laughs> so Flappy Bird is a great game to be able to build. It was a huge success, I don't know, a couple years ago, where it was the number one game in the app store and everyone was playing it and it's such an easy and fun game for you to build yourself, especially in Python. Now, this is where it starts getting a slightly more difficult and I built a puzzle game. Now, this puzzle game is a game where you try and get all the numbers in order from lowest to highest, but you can only change the bottom number. So right here, two is at the top and then now two is going down and you can just slowly just change one number at a time until all the numbers are in order. And it's a pretty difficult game where you just gotta keep, kinda keep going back and forth a lot of different times to really be able to change the numbers around. But it's a game where we have to be able to only allow the user to be able to do a couple different movements at a time. However, trying to solve a fundamental puzzle where there could be a lot of different moves and we just need to track to see when the puzzle is complete and be able to track all the numbers in the list to be able to dynamically change them on button click. So I highly recommend looking into how you can build a puzzle game if you have time. All right, now going to another project where we are going to be building a frogger game now this frogger game is the green is the frog and the red is the cars and we got to try and get past all of the items if you get past them all you win and if you don't you lose so if we run this again we can say we're going to go through it and we're going to get hit and you can see that we just kind of start over. Now, ways we could implement this is have lives and all that going on, but really, if you're able to get this far, this is also awesome. Um, building games and building projects in Python is all about experience. So then you can add that to your either your resume or to your company that you're wanting to join. So if you're wanting to get into Python, try and build a Frogger game. They're fun to build and they can definitely help you elevate your career in Python. Now, another puzzle game, which is gonna be fairly hard to build is Sudoku. Now, Sudoku is a game about puzzles where you're trying to get the number. Numbers can't be duplicated, so there can't be a three in the same row and column as one another. And this game is pretty fun to do. We can kind of move around and just add numbers wherever we want. And if we, it'll let you add them anywhere, but it'll tell you you lost if you have too many numbers of the same. So this is a wrong, this is wrong. It's a real fun puzzle game and I highly recommend trying to build it yourself maybe as more of a later career application because Sudoku is kind of a hard game to build at first because of all the random generation that needs to happen. But it's also a great game to add to your resume. All right, and now let's go into our last game, which is Blackjack. Now, I am a fan of Blackjack, but we're not gonna have a UI and stuff with this. All we're gonna say is your hand is 16, or it's actually 17 total value is 17 in the dealer's hand is a six and a heart. So I'm gonna say stand right here and I lost. <laughs> so let's play again. So we'll say I'm going to stand. Oh my gosh, I lost again. All right, we're gonna hit, we're gonna hit. I'm going to stand, I lost again. So apparently I'm horrible at blackjack, but it's definitely a game that's fun to play. As you can see, you can start using different symbols for the suits. You can use different numbers for the ranks and the values of how they all work together. It's very fun things to be able to do. And building games in Python is just overall a lot of fun. Especially if you had all 18 of these games in your resume, I can almost guarantee that it'll put you in the best spot possible to get your first Python job. Um, if you're able to duplicate these projects and create them yourselves and really understand all the different pieces that need to go in to be a Python developer, which you need to know to be able to build these projects, you are definitely gonna be on your way of getting your first Python job in 2023. So I highly recommend, you know, keep going at it, keep building projects, keep going at these smaller projects that you can just keep adding to your resume. And then once you get these projects implemented, then start building bigger and bigger projects. Becoming a software engineer is not a sprint. It is 100% a marathon where you can learn every single day. So just take it one step at a time and you'll be on your way.